So the issue with wheels on Bloodhound, it sounds simple, you know, we've got a car, we've got four wheels, it's got to keep Andy off the, off the dirt, it's got to give stability, so we've got to be able to steer, um, but actually the biggest challenge for them is the speed, so at the speeds we're potentially going at, you know, these, these things go around 8,000 revolutions per minute, you know, it's a huge amount of energy in those wheels, and it's just how they all hang together. So at Newquay, everyone saw the car running, we're on rubber tyres, they were exactly what you need for tarmac. A, you know, Newquay Airport wouldn't have been that keen and would have left kind of big grooves down, down the track and stuff. It would have been a bit of a nightmare. But actually, you need the grip. So we were relying very much on wheel brakes at Newquay. So we needed the grip between the tyres and the tarmac to give Andy that deceleration, that slowing distance. Now in South Africa, we're on a desert. We've got a very hard surface, but you need a solid wheel. So the issue with the tyre isn't so much the fact it's a pneumatic tyre, it's actually holding it onto the rim. So very few people have run a tyre successfully over 400, you know, so between 400 and 500 miles an hour. Actually, the bead of the tyre lifts off. As it lifts off, it deflates the tyre. So you end up with four flat tyres at 450 miles an hour. And it's very difficult for people to try bead lockers, all these different clamping methods to do it. If you go back to what we're trying to do, we're not driving the car through the wheels. So actually, we don't need very good grip between the wheels and the desert. So actually, for us, just a solid metal wheel and if you like the tyre bit, the compliance, the squidginess is actually from the ground. And, that, and that's, if you like, where our tyre comes from. It's from deflecting the ground as the tyre, as the wheel runs over it. So, so with the wheel shape, we, we'd kind of come up with a, we actually designed the wheel just like it was the inside of a, a jet engine. Um, and the wheel shape we came up with, working with Ron Ayres, he, his view was we needed to be a bit like a boat hull. So he thought the wheel would come up on the plane. So we had a V-shaped wheel profile. And the first time we tested that in South Africa, towards the end of 2012, as it ran on the desert, that sharp V actually cut through the surface of the desert and got really damaged. So we made a trailer, called it the Mad Max trailer. We put three IBCs on it, um, so big, those big cubic meter containers, put water in them to load up those wheels and drove it across the desert, at, you know, between 40 and 50 miles an hour, just to see what it would work and do some trials and turning and stuff. But the very sharp V that cut through the surface of the desert and underneath the, the really smooth surface there's a shale layer, so very fine rock, sharp rock, and that was cutting and damaging the wheel surface. So we stopped that and said this isn't going to work. So we then went back the following year and instead of having a sharp V, yeah. we'd made one wheel that was, was quite rounded and another wheel that was almost completely flat. And we put one on each side of the trailer and we literally did donuts. So we drove 100 meter diameter circles in the desert. And for a while on Google Earth, it looked like somebody had been doing the Olympic rings. So you could see these big circles on a hack scheme pan. Um, and we did ones to the left and ones to the right. And then you could see which wheel worked best by how it, how it basically stuck in the dirt. So the actual exact wheel shape, we, we had lots of ideas, but the only way you could find out is to try them out in the desert. And actually that's why this testing we're doing in South Africa this year is so important because we haven't been able to test them anything more than about 50 miles an hour. So actually, we think the wheels will behave like a boat hull. They'll actually come up on the plane. So the faster Andy drives, the less contact patch they'll be with the desert. So at top speed, it could only be a couple of millimetres actually in the desert and the rest of it's just skimming across the surface. So manufacturing is, is, a, is a huge deal. I mean, I mean each of these wheels is colossal, so we're talking about nearly a metre in diameter, they're 95 kilos each. They're going around similar energy to what's inside a jet engine. So it's not something you can go down to your local tyre dealer centre and, and, and find a wheel or an alloy. So we're very fortunate to build a consortium that was managed by guys in Glasgow, Castle Precision. They put together the team that actually allowed us to do this, so it's a, a team of fantastic companies that allowed us to do everything from melting the material so we have a custom melt of aluminium to being forged by to fish in Germany so having the, the metal cheeses from a better word they call them squeezed and pressed into shape to get really good grain structure and then back to the UK to Glasgow to Castle Precision to do that final machining to the same level of tolerance as you'd need for the inside of a jet engine and, and that's what produced the wheels. So 
we've got a wheel. We think it's going to work. We can't, we can't test it by putting it on a car. The only car that can take us to its top speed is Bloodhound. That doesn't, hasn't run to those speeds yet. So to give you confidence, you have to try and test it. The nearest thing to our wheel is the inside of a jet engine. So think of a Rolls-Royce Trent. The core of that engine is the same energy as our wheel. So we're very fortunate working with Rolls-Royce in Derby in that they use one of their spin test rigs. So it's a, a test cell of box that you put what they would normally put a disc in from a jet engine. They, they can spin it up to full speed. Um, and we did that. So we took that to the, the top speed the vehicle could ever see to give us a safety margin. So that's spinning about 10 and a half thousand revolutions per minute. So 55,000 radial G. So that's a kilo of sugar weighing like 55 tons on the edge and it's trying to rip, rip the metal apart. Now with us, we thought, you know, so we strain gauged it, we put a load of instrumentation on it and actually this whole test is to validate our models. So it's the only time we're gonna actually instrument this wheel to be able to see it at full speed. How much does it stretch? Well, it stretches nearly three millimeters. So as it goes along, it's growing by three millimeters just for the forces on the wheel. Now, the one that surprised us was how hot it got. So when they do a turbine or a compressor stage at Rolls-Royce, they run this chamber in a vacuum. So you've got all these blades and it's churning away and it will get very hot. Look at our wheel, we've got a completely smooth wheel that shouldn't have any issue at all. So they just ran it at normal air pressure. Within three seconds of spinning up to speed, just our smooth wheel shearing against the air, the surface of the wheel got to 90 degrees centigrade. So nearly boiling point just from going through the air. And it's stuff like that that makes this product fantastic. There was all these things that, he, that the unknowns that keep cropping up, but no, we were amazed that not only the wheel stretched completely with prediction, but we didn't think it would get that hot. So if you can imagine you've got a wheel that is say 95 kilos rotating around the speeds we're going at, balance and wobble, you know, so on, on your car, they put weights on it to balance where your, your valve is. We don't have that, it's just a, a wheel, but the level of balance this has to be done to is phenomenal. So we have this wheel with its hub assembly all put together. That has to be a better balance, three times better than the inside of a jet engine. It's similar to a, a, what a CD or a disc drive would be. You know, it, it's, the, the technical term is G2.5. So it's the acceleration of it is um, two and a half millimeters per second. That is nothing. That is. You know, it is so finely balanced. We do that by removing very small amounts of material from the edge of the hub, and that balances the whole assembly. So the wheel's in quite an aggressive atmosphere. So we've, you know, you want to have as good a surface on like as you could possibly have. So what we're worried about, you know, the thing that, why we've chosen this aluminium we've used, is that we actually did some gas gun trials. We actually took some chunks of desert, and we fired them at different types of material, different types of aluminiums, to find one that doesn't crack. So the last thing we want is a wheel cracking. So to help us prevent that, the outside of the wheel surface is what's called shot peened. So you basically take lots of little beads and you, you, it's like hammering the outside of the material and it gives it a, a much harder coating that makes it more resistant and it's less likely to crack. Actually, when you think about it, when we start running the car, if we did get little nicks and bits of damage, actually the car itself running over that surface in effect will shot peen its surface as well. So what they found with thrust SSC was the actual outside wheel surface healed itself. So the aluminium moved and filled any defects just by the fact of running on the car.